Okay, we're ready to start. I do. I already told you, right? I don't know that, Esther. I didn't know that. That's why I'm telling you. Good morning. Welcome and thank you. Thank you for attending. My name is Esther Duran Lum. I'm a member of Uncage and Reunite Families, a coalition of concerned citizens and organizations. Together with community activists and organization representatives gathered here today, we formed an impromptu grassroots coalition called Uncage and Reunite Families to address the horrendous crisis we are facing throughout our nation and especially here in Arizona, whereby innocent children from infants to teens were torn from their parents, separated, and held in detention centers. To date, even after a federal court order and deadline to reunite the children with their parents or relatives, approximately 497 of 2,654 kids separated from their parents are still in custody due to the incompetent and unconscionable lack of record keeping by those who incarcerated them first in cages and then transferred thousands of them to detention centers throughout the United States to await court decisions on their asylum status. The latest numbers show 322 parents were deported without their children. The horror of it all is that even infants and toddlers unable to identify their parents were separated. 22 of them are under five years old. Their parents were forced to sign documents under false information and then deported without recording which children belonged to them. The conditions under which they were held are inhumane and against the laws of the United States Department of Health and Human Services Office of Refugee Resettlement. Abuses of the children have been witnessed and or documented by the Government Accountability Office, GAO, the ACLU, attorneys visiting the sites, 
and elected officials. Abuses include physical, sexual, emotional, traumatic, drugging, restraining, runaways, malnutrition, lack of proper health care, and abusing rights of pregnant teens. In Arizona alone, Southwest Key Detention Centers, a nonprofit organization receiving millions of dollars from the federal government, was recently inspected by the Arizona Department of Health Services, ADHS. Only three of the 13 Southwest Key facilities in Maricopa and Pima counties were reported as having no violations. Others where molestation and sexual abuse took place had multiple violations of not vetting their employees according to Arizona law and employees not having fingerprint cards to assess if they had prior criminal charges. ADHS Director Kara Christ wrote a letter to Governor Ducey stating that, quote, the deficiencies do not constitute an immediate threat to the safety and well-being of the children at the shelters, unquote. We vehemently disagree. Statistics have proven that Southwest Key does not have enough employees monitoring the children and some of the employees were not properly vetted for criminal backgrounds. In Texas alone, Southwest Key had hundreds of violations in the past three years, and one child died shortly after being released from his detention site. This is outrageous for a nonprofit agency that has received $1.5 billion from the federal government in the last decade and $458 million in 2018 alone. So based on the facts that have been documented by credible sources, we have a multiple list of specific demands listed separately for the press. A few of those are, one, issues be addressed resulting from the recent crisis producing policy for those seeking asylum. Two, the causes of all the abuses be resolved until all children are reunited with their parents. Yes. 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 Before we start, I would like to introduce uh, former Supervisor Mary Rose Wilcox to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I'm very honored to be here today with this coalition of groups who have come together because this must stop. You are going to hear today um, a lot of statements that are very logical statements and could help uh, stop what is occurring. But is anybody listening? We have to make sure that our elected officials at the federal level are paying attention. And we have to remember that election day is coming up and if they're not paying attention, vote them out of office. Yes. 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 This is the most inhumane thing that any of us have ever seen. You know, we have seen a lot. We went through immigration reform where uh, all of a sudden we had 287G implemented, we had our community uh, really, really just um, inundated with Sheriff Arpaio's people. We had things happen to our community that were horrendous, but nothing is worse than having children caged, having parents not knowing where their children is. Today on my way in, I was listening to NPR radio, and they were saying that people are now going down to Guatemala to find the parents who they released because they lost total contact with them. What kind of world are we living in? We are America, we are proud of it, but we have to act like it. So please listen today and take the words of all these fine people and put them to the press, put them to the people, and let the people remember that we cannot allow this to happen. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mary Rose. Our next speaker, I'd like to introduce you to the Reverend Bill Lyons. Conference Minister of the UCC Southwest Conference. Thank you, Esther. My name is Bill Lyons. I'm the Conference Minister for the United Church of Christ in the Southwest, covering Arizona, New Mexico, and El Paso, Texas. 
I'm here today because the Bible has much to say about how people treat parentless children. None of what the Bible says includes caging or criminalizing them. The Bible calls us to care for children, all children, especially parentless children. Care is not cages. Care is not detention. Care is not family separation. Care is what we're required to give to kids as a moral mandate by our faith. Family separation and child detention traumatizes children rather than caring for them, and it must stop. Yes. Jesus said, and anyone who welcomes a little child on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to be shut out, if you cause one of these little ones' lives to be ruined, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe the world because we ruin other people's lives. Yes, those moments seem inevitable, said Jesus, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the ruining? This is what caring for children looks like. Children living in homes, not in facilities. Children placed with kin, foster families, or refugee resettlement families until they can be reunified with their parents. Children welcomed lovingly, not criminalized. Dollars diverted away from padding the pockets of private prison industries or nonprofits and into the hands of families who will welcome kids, love on them, and do the caring. Laws that prevent trauma from happening to kids. If agencies like Southwest Key are operating within the law, as our elected officials claim, and kids are still being victimized in those facilities, traumatized by those agencies, then it's time to change the laws. Yes. 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 Hold accountable facilities in whose supposed care children are temporarily placed. Care looks like closing Arizona's borders to agencies shipping kids into detention facilities operating within our state. Care means believing children who report being abused in Southwest Key and other detention facilities and responding swiftly and justly. Today I must confess the sin of my own church in other areas of family separation, particularly the Indian school movement. During the Indian school movement, my own church thought it was doing the right thing. We know that's not true. We confess our sin. Knowing we were wrong then means we are confident that separating families is wrong now. Yeah. 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 It's not just politically wrong, it's morally reprehensibly wrong. On behalf of the United Church of Christ, I stand in solidarity with Uncaged and Reunified Families Coalition, and I call out Governor Ducey and Department of Health Services Director Kara Christ. Yes. Yes. I call for mandated transparency of child detention corporations and nonprofits like Southwest Key. I call for increased oversight of all facilities operated by such corporations. And I call for an achievable plan to end child detention in Arizona and across the country. Thank you. Yeah, great. Yeah, thank, you. Yeah. thank you, Reverend. The next speaker uh, is Rabbi Robert Kravitz, President of the Board of Rabbis of Greater Phoenix. Welcome, Rabbi. Although introduced by title, I'm just Bob Kravitz, a citizen of the state of Arizona. For the past month, the worldwide Jewish community has been in preparation for Rosh Hashanah, the New Year Holy Day, signified by the sounding of the ram's horn, the shofar. This ancient instrument was used to startle the people to challenges around them, 
and to offer the opportunity to return to the paths of righteousness. The shofar blasts three unique sounds. Tikiyah, Shivarim, and Teruah. Today I sound the shofar to call us to the painful challenge of children being taken from their moms and dads and shipped away to God only knows where, to facilities without proper medical care, poor educational opportunities, and a basic lack of knowledge of when they will be reunited with their family. This is an alarm to alert decent and honorable Americans. <laughs> Trauma and pain, fear and horror, the separation of children from families who love them and who want to care for them, who want to protect them from abuses. We sound to Kia to call us together in solidarity, to demand corrections to these terrors and abuses of the innocents. Shivarim, the broken sound of the shofar. <laughs> Tiny little ones taken without understanding from their families, separated so long they can't even recognize their families. Broken systems from corporations who care only about filling beds and filling their pockets with federal and state dollars. No proper medical treatments, no compassion, nobody caring for these little ones, thrust into a whirl of foreign faces and strange places. We sound Shivarim, the broken sound, for the broken hearts and souls of these children and their families as we hope for their safe reuni reunification and return. Teruah, the alarm and warning of the shofar. <laughs> Abuse of tiny children and adolescents, placement into cages for their safety lack of appropriate education, absence of health and safety preparations, and incompetent record keepers, leaving these children alone, scared, separated from those who love them. This is intolerable. This is a slap against all important American values. This is abhorrent. This is a violation of decency and minimal humanity. This is wrong. This is a blot on the sacred religious values we purport to teach in our congregations. This must stop. 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 This must stop.